Good day, my name is Casala Gina Manta from BSN 11E. For today's video, I will be performing the assessing of the abdomen. So first, pre-introductory phase. I'll check the medical, re the medical record for the client and uh, as well the doctor's order. Aside from that, um, uh, determine the scope and the assessment needed. Prepare all the uh, necessary equipment. Lastly, do the hand washing and the gloving if necessary. So first, um, do uh, check all the medical records here in the uh, for the client and uh, prepare all the equipments. There's this stethoscope, the pen for the documentation, the measurement, uh, the measuring tool, the pen pen light, and the alcohol. Introductory phase. Greet the client politely, introduce yourself and verify the client's identity. Next is ask the client how how he she who how he she would uh, call during the assessment and build rapport. So sir. Good day sir, my name is Casa G. Lomanta and I am your student nurse for today. So um, may I know your name, sir? Oh, good day, sir. So, how would you want how would you want me to call you, sir? Jackly. Jackly. So, I procedure to the client. Ask how he she can participate during this assessment. Provide the opportunity to ask or uh, the opportunity to the client to, uh, to ask or raise any concern. So, for today, sir, um, I will be assessing your abdomen. Um, do you still have any questions, sir, or clarification with regards to the assessment that I will be doing to you th this day? Okay. All right, sir. So since um since there's not nothing else, um is it uh in this place sir, are you comfortable or is this okay with you? Okay, sir. So anyway, I don't have any questions anymore, sir. I don't have any information. Let me go ahead now and um, assess your abdomen. Okay. <laughs> For surveying the abdomen, first position the client in a supine position. Sir, good day. Um, today I will be starting to assess your abdomen. Um, can you first lay down? Um, first, can you lay down for me? Thank you. So the rationale for this is to ensure the comfortability and to execute the to, to execute the proper assessment of the abdomen. Next is cover the upper and the lower body parts of the of the client with the bed sheet, um, leaving the uh, abdomen exposed. So today, sir, um, I will going to cover your um, upper, uh, lower and upper upper uh, um, body parts. Okay. And lastly, sir, um, uh, would it be fine if I request you to, to take off your shirt? Thank you. So the rationale for this is um, covering the uh, other parts of the client's body is to ensure the client's privacy. Next is um, for um, observing the abdominal skin, note for any vascularities like um, spider beams. Next is note for any um, 
Note for any scars, lesion, or edema. Um, other than that, note for uh, for the straight or the stre or stretch marks. And lastly, is um, note for any note for the history of the scars and document the um, location of the of the scars uh, by quadrant or reference line. So, I'm just going to inspect your um, abdomen part, sir. I'm not I'm not going to touch anything. Um, in your body part, okay? So the rationale for this is to know if there are um, any um, any presence of edema, lesion, or uh, vascular lesion, or any discoloration. Next, for inspecting the um, umbilicus, um, umbilicus, um, note for the color, the discoloration, and as well as the um, the contour. So the rationale for this to you know to inspect the uh, the contour, the color, and as well as the discolor discoloration is to uh, to check again yeah to check the discoloration of of the abdomen. So examining the uh, for examining the abdomen while the client is in uh, uh, in a supine position, um, sit. Um, the, um, this, uh, sit beside the uh, sit beside the client. Look across the body part or the, the abdomen of the client, and uh, with a slightly uh, level, I mean, with a level slightly higher than the client's abdomen. So I'll go ahead and measure the the umbilicus part of the client. Just going to measure your um, abdomen part, abdomen part, sir. Okay. So the rationale for this is to, is to determine if there are any abnormal abnormalities like um, um, ascites. So next, um, after the measuring of the umbilicus area, inspect for abdominal girth. Um, the area between the lower ribs and the pubic bone, and note for any abdominal enlargement. So the um, rationale for this is to determine the abdo abdomen ab um, abdominal distension. So uh, next is measure the abdominal girth um, using the measuring tape. Um, make sure that the client emptied his blood. So again, I'll go ahead and measure the abdominal part of the client. is to have an accurate measurement. Next step is position the client into a supine standing position. Um, use a disposable tape and place it um, and place it behind the client's uh, measure. It, I mean behind the client. Um, measure it with measure it from umbilicus. So the rationale for this is to determine again uh, if there's an abdominal if there's an distension on on his abdominal. So next, um, record the distance, record the distance and centimeter and or inches um, for or inches of the uh, when you when you uh, measure the abdominal part. So go ahead and 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 note uh, document that. So um, the rationale for this and the, the important. Um, why this is so important? It's because um, this is to you know to monitor if there's any changes or if uh, to monitor the measurement of the client. Next, um, take all take all the future measurement from the same um, location. So again, I'll go. I'll still going to uh, measure the, the abdominal part of the client, and I will document that. If there's any changes or if there's any decrease or increase of sizes, that is a marked abdomen, marked abdomen with pen, and the client to and ask ask the client not to wash the mark 
until it is not needed. So the rationale for this is marking uh, will help that to identify the measuring signs. So sir, so I'm still going to um, still going to measure your abdominal abdominal part, and I'm going to mark it. Okay. Um, anyway, sir, I would like to inform you, can you not wash it until it's not needed? Okay. Thank you. Marking the after marking the abdominal part, check for symmetry. Ask the client to um, to raise um, he, uh, his. Uh, ask the client to raise his head. Um, this uh, the rationale for this is to check the any distension. So can you uh, raise your he uh, head for me, sir? Just um, a little bit of um, just raise your head. Thank you. I just needed to check if there's any distension in in this body. All right. So, um, uh, next step is to check, um, inspect the abdominal uh, movement when the client breathes. Um, when the client breathes, um, observe um, peristaltic. Um, observe the peristaltic. So. The rationale for this is to determine the abdominal measurement. First, auscultate for bowel sounds. Use the diaphragm of the stethoscope and make that it is a warm before placing on abdomen. So the rationale for this is to promote comfort. So let's go ahead. And again, this is a diaphragm and auscultate the bowel sounds or the uh, four, uh, four quadrants of the abdominal. So next is apply gentle pressure or let the stethoscope press if the abdomen is tender. Uh, the rationale for this is to prevent increasing pain. So again, um, um, check the the four quadrants of the abdomen and and uh, apply a gentle pressure on it. So next is auscultate uh, the the start um, auscultate it and start from right lower quadrant then clockwise. So what I did is that. I, uh, again, I did auscultate it with uh, uh, using the diaphragm of the stethoscope, which is this one, and um, auscultate it with the lo right lower quadrant. This is the uh, right lower quadrant. Then clockwise. Caution. First, for cause all the quadrants for uh, for tone like E and systematically either clockwise or up to up and down. Our rationale for this is to, to, to determine the size and location of the abdominal organs. So first is um, um, for cause the four um, quadrants of the abdominal part. Next, uh, second, for cause the span or height of the liver. So begin from the top, uh, from the right lower quadrant, then upwards. A rationale, to, a rationale for this is to identify the possible um, hepatomegaly. So first, this is the lower, um, lower right, uh, right lower quadrant, then upwards. So go, we'll go ahead and, and for cause that. So next, note for the change from tympani to dullness. 
Then mark the area of the dullness noted. So again, I will I will still for cause all of right lower quadrant until the uh, up to the upward or the liver part, and I will notate the the tympani uh, the changes for from tympani to dullness. So the rationale for this is to identify the liver border of dullness. Next, um, after precasting the span or height of the liver, we will now assess the uh, descent. First, locate the liver border of dullness. So the rationale for this is to determine the size. So this is the uh, liver border or, or the last part of the rib cage. So the rationale for this, um, observe, uh, second is observe for the descent of the lower border while the client um, hold his or, I mean, hold his breath and then percuss it. So the rationale for that step is to identify if the, uh, if the liver is enlarged. So, uh, sir, um, while I'm percussing this, um, this uh, border, uh, this liver border of, you, of your abdominal, um, can you hold your breath? So again, I'll just check and percuss it again so that um, I, I, if I uh, if I can notate if there's any changes of the of the bowel uh, sounds. Then after that, we will now percuss the upper border. First, locate the upper right chest and percuss downward. Then mark the point from the upper chest until the dullness is notated. I mean, is uh, is noted. So the rationale for this is to identify the upper border of liver dull, liver dullness. Again, the uh, what I did uh, earlier, that's uh, that's what we're going to do again to uh, to check uh, for the dullness if there's if there's any changes of it. So next is measure the distance between the two marks and repeat the precaution at the two uh, at the mid mid. Sternal line. For this is to, to, to determine the liver size. Next is perform a second method of percussion and ask the client to take a deep breath. Then percuss the last left um, inter interspace at the near axillary line. Um, a rationale for this is to determine the splenic enlargement. So, sir, I will I uh, will going to perform a second method of percussion. Um, can you can you take a deep breath while I'm percussing your um um spleen side sir okay thank you so just take a deep breath while i'm percussing take a deep breath sir thank you and uh take a deep breath again sir thank you so next if, if the um it is it the blunt precaution on liver first ask the client to sit with uh, with his back facing you, so the rationale for this is to evaluate the size. So, sir, can you um, sit down for me, please? And let's evaluate if there's any um, size after percussing the um, the front or the um, the anterior part of the body or the abdominal part. So next, place your left of uh, left first against the lower right anterior rib cage. Use your ulnar side of your right hand to strike the left hand. Also, note for tenderness. So, um, to uh, the rationale for this is to evaluate the size. Next, um, is a um, uh, it is a blunt precaution on kidneys. Ask the client to sit with his um, back facing you. Then place yourself into left hand and control on controvertebral angles. So next, this is blunt percussion on kidneys. Ask client to sit with his um, back facing you, 
then place yourself into left uh, hand on controvertible controvertible angles. So first, just tap it uh, lightly so that the patient will not um, feel the pain or feel any pain while you're percussing the the back of his um, of his I mean the kidney part. for percussion, perform the fluid wave test by asking the client to place um, his ulnar side of hand and lateral side of forearm to the midline of the abdomen. Then place the palmar surface of your fingers and hand to the one side of the client's abdomen. But for this one, I will going to uh, call my assistant so that I can perform the fluid wave test properly. Ms. Rangen, can you uh, place your ulnar, si ulnar side of your hand and lateral side of your forearm to the midline of the abdomen. So, and by uh, by doing this, we can uh, we can check or we can identify the possible ascites. So yes, use your other hand to tap the up, uh, opposite side of the abdominal wall and note for any fluid move, movement. Normal patient, position again the client back to the supine position and cover the upper and the lower body part with the bed sheet, leaving the abdominal exposed. So next is begin with begin palpating the uh, with a non-tender uh, with non I mean with a non-tender uh, abdominal quadrant. So sir, um, I will be uh, performing the palpation, okay? I will be touching your abdominal part, sir. Would that be fine with you? Yes, yes. Okay. I'll be, I'll be, will be starting to palpate now, sir. Use, and then use fingers to uh, compress the quadrant to adapt one centimeter in a uh, dipping motion. So again, this is uh, the the palpation for this of four. So um, begin the palpating on a non-tender abdominal quadrant. Use fingertips to ex to compress quadrant to adapt uh, of one centimeter in a dipping motion. Uh, lift fingers only gently and proceed to the next quadrant. So begin palpating the uh, use the palmar surface of the fingers to compress quadrants to a maximum of depth of five to six centimeter. Note for any resistance of any deeper structures, then perform the bimanual palpation if resistance of deeper structures is felt. So for palpating for masses, um, use fingertips to compress all quadrants to a depth of one centimeter in a dipping motion. Next, note for any masses and its size, location, sh uh, shape, consistency, um, demar uh, demar so, uh, I mean the demarcation possibility uh, and the tenderness and lastly is the mobility. So once you uh, once you uh, uh, note uh, once you uh, notice the the changes of the shapes, uh, the uh, the shape, the mobility of the of the bowel and as well as the bowel uh, movements of the abdominal, um, um, right away document document it. Next is palpate the umbilicus and its surrounding. Note for any swelling, bulges, and masses. So, uh, note for any resistance or any deeper structures and perform the bimanual palpation of if resistance deeper than deeper, deeper structures if, if not. So, first I'll go ahead and notate the, um, if there's any changes or uh, if there are any uh, deeper structures. Next is 
used for um next is use finger uh, fingertips to compress all quadrants to a depth of one centimeter in a dipping motion note for any masses and its size uh, locations shapes um, consistency tenderness and mobility La uh, next uh, palpate the umbilicus and its surrounding note for any swelling any uh, swelling bulges and masses uh, use the thumb and its fingers uh, or use both hands to palpate deeply the uh, the abdominal or the four quadrants so for the for palpating the liver stand at the client's right side place the left hand under the client's back uh, at the at the level of the 11 to 12 uh, ribs so lay right hand uh, parallel to the right costal margin the fingertips should point toward uh, towards the client's head ask the client to inhale then compress upward and inward with fingers so for palpating the splints there are actually two ways on how to do that but um, I will be performing the uh, the uh, reaching the over over of the abdomen wall uh, abdomen with left hand or with my left arm and place left hand under the posterior um, tower of, and, and pull it gently Place the right hand at the left costal margin with the fingers pointing towards the client's head. So fingers pointing towards the client's head. Then ask the client to inhale and press inward and upward while providing support with the other hand. So note for the consistency and tenderness. So sir, can you take a deep breath? I mean, can you inhale and exhale? while I'm performing this palpation of your, for your spleen. Okay, can you take a deep breath, sir? Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Okay, thank you. So when it comes to palpating the kidneys, begin, uh, begun in palpating at the cephasis uh, pubis, then and move upward and outward to estimate the bladder borders, I mean the borders. Note for consistency and tenderness. So while performing the hypersensitivity test, stroke the abdomen with a sharp object object um, example a broken um, teeth applicator or a thong blade however I don't, we I don't uh, I still don't have that uh, materials so I'll, I'll uh, what I will going to do is I'll grasp a um, I'll grasp a fold of, of the skin of my patient that with my thumb and index finger and quickly let go hmm? I'll grasp and then weekly let go so note for um any consistent um, i mean uh, repeat this one several times doing the uh, doing the abdominal wall and then note for any uh, pain or exaggerated skin uh, reaction so again i'll, I'll repeat the uh, procedure i'll grasp again the fold uh, the fold of a skin and then let go so again, I'll fold my patient's skin and then quickly let go. I'll do it one once again and quickly let go. So how does it feel, sir? Do you uh, did you feel any pain? Okay, lang man siya. Hindi kaya sakit. Normal lang. Okay, thank you so much for that, sir. So for the so what sign, ask the client to lie on the left side, then hyperextend the right leg of the client. Then afterwards, if if the client is already, uh, if you already perform it, note the pain and reaction of the client. 
So, um, sir, can you uh, go to your, to your left side? And I will have, I will perform the so what test, sir. Okay. Did you feel any pain, sir, when I move your? Okay, thank you. For um, for testing the ob obturator uh, sign, hold and support the client's right knees and ankle. Then flex the hip and knee and rotate the leg internally and externally. Okay, sir, so did you feel any pain or did you feel any changes when I tried to uh, move your uh, right leg? Okay, voila. So, um, I'll, I'll notate the pain or uh, will notate the pain and reaction of the client so that we can check or we can monitor the, the reaction or the results of this um, test. So for the testing the appendicitis, as, um, assess the um, rebound tenderness by by palpating deeply at 90 degrees into the abdomen, away from the from the painful or tender area. Suddenly release the pressure, then listen and watch the cl client's expression of pain. So I actually have a question, sir. Um, which hurt more, um, when I press in or when I release the pressure? Okay. Thank you so much for that, sir. I'll go ahead and notate that in your chart. Thank you. So for summary and closing phase, I will help the client to get back uh, to put his uh, clothes on. And then I will I will help also to to position the client in a comfortable in a comfortable way. So, sir, thank you so much again for your cooperation throughout this assessment uh, today. Uh, to end this one, sir, I will help you uh, they, uh, put it, put back your issue. Thank you so much again, sir, for for your participation. Anyway, I would like to sum up everything here, sir. Uh, you know, th you know, throughout this uh, throughout this um, assessment, as I can see here, sir. I mean, as I uh, assess your abdomen, there's nothing uh, wrong or there's no abnorm abnormalities uh, with your uh, with your abdominal part. Uh, there's actually no lesions, no rashes, as well as no edemas that I, that I. Uh, you know that I detect in your um, in your abdominal abdominal part. So uh, for the, for further discussions or for further explanation, I will I will notate. I mean I did document everything what I did uh, what we did during this assessment. So my uh, so your position so your own position will discuss it to you further. Okay. So anyway, sir, again, uh, my name is Castellan Gilomanta, your student nurse for today. Thank you again for your cooperation, sir. Have a great day.